أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I seek refuge from the evils of Satan and I begin in the name of God Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful, dearest and most beloved divine and brothers and sisters in Islam the fraternity of religions and the concourse of humanity welcome to the electric mosques presentation of the teachings of Islam striving to bring Islam into your hearts of peace goodwill and love for all humanity for all the environment for peoples of all faiths, peace, goodwill, on this period of the occasion of Yuma Nabi, the birth and death anniversary of our beloved and divine Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him. This is the period of Yuma Nabi, observed in the honor of this great personality, this man who claims that he was not the son of God, that he was not a divine personality, but a man and a prophet and a seer sent by the universal creator, Lord God of the worlds, as a teacher, as a benefactor, to unite humanity and to unite religions. Brothers and sisters, when you think of the personality of Muhammad, one can be one can help being consumed with awe and respect and humility, except for his enemies and the enemies of Islam. But I will now give you 
some views of scholarship written about this unlettered individual or prophet sent by God Almighty, a man who could not read or write, how could he have done all of this unless it was by the spark of the finger of brilliance and intellect from the finger of the creator, Lord God of the world, unto Muhammad. I wish to take the opportunity this morning before we move on to offer a prayer with you brothers and sisters for our president David Arthur Granger who is sick and unwell that God Almighty will bless him O Allah with recovery and will join his heart so that our president who is in hospital in Cuba that he will recuperate and return soon we pray O Lord for all the sick people of the country and to make it easy for our politicians to communicate and to show example to the population of Guyana for peace and goodwill. Bless all our families and all our friends who are unwell, Almighty Allah, and keep us on the right path. And I ask you once again to bless our and help our President of Guyana, Brigadier President David Arthur Granger. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmideen, Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Ladina, Anamta alayhim, Garu al-Makdubi alayhim, Waladu alayhim, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kul huwa Allah u ahad, Allahu al-Samad, Lam yalid wa lam yalad, wa lam yakulluhu kufu wa nahad. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And I would like to sing a song I used to sing when I was a little boy, and I know I'm no singer, but my Ustad, the mighty and the great Arnold Umar of Skeldon now Karubatan, who was my teacher and mentor in Islam on a life, had taught me this, the first Qasida to sing and he was very proud when I had to sing it on occasions and one particular occasion when one person he selected could not have made it and he called upon me and I did it. May Allah bless Arnold Omar with a resting place. My Lord, my mentor, I honor him and I ask you to bless him. And this is the pertinent song for Prophet Muhammad. Today is the blessed birthday of Muhammad. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He came as a guide for the entire world. On him be peace and blessings. When Muhammad was born, fragrance of perfume filled the atmosphere. The light of prophethood and truth shone from his forehead and lit all the homes. The angels were overjoyed and even Allah said peace and blessings on Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Aaj hai maulud akram Asala tu asala Rehnuma dunia mein aai Asala tu asala Jab huwe paida جب ہوئے پیدا محمد مشکہ کی آئی ہوا بر گئی کشبو کے بولا آسلت و آسلام نور پیشا نی سے چمکا روشن ہوا نور پیشا نی سے چمکا سارے گھر روشن ہوا جبرائیل آکر پکارا آسلت و آسلت 
खुदा खुश हो के बोल असल तू असल the child's prayer in the name of god most gracious most merciful my wish becomes a prayer when it reaches my lips oh allah make my life useful like that of a candle may the darkness of the world be removed with my efforts as a moth life is full of love for the lighted lamp and may every place be brightened because of my illumination may my country be beautiful with my presence like the garden is beautiful because of its flowers May my life be as full of love for the lamp of knowledge. May my duty and actions always be the support of the poor, the support and protection of those who are weak, O Allah. Protect me from the evil things and direct me in the path of goodness and righteousness. Let piety be dua banke ta man meri zindagi shaw ki surat o khuda meri lappe aati hai dua banke ta wonders 
in just over two decades. Lamartine, the renowned French historian speaking on the essentials of human greatness, wonders. So let us wonder, let us listen and let us think, and I quote, if greatness of purpose, the smallness of means, and astounding results are the three criteria of human genius. Who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The most famous men created arms, laws, and empire only. They founded everything at all, no more than material powers which often crumbled away before their eyes. This man moved not only armies, legislation, empires, peoples, and dynasties, but millions of men in one third of the then inhabited world. And more than that, he moved the altars, the gods, the false religions, the ideas, the beliefs, and souls. His forbearance in victories, his ambition, which was entirely devoted to one idea, and in no manner striving for an empire, his endless prayers, his mystic conversations with Almighty God, his death and his triumphs after death, all these attest not to an imposter, but to a firm conviction which gave him the power to restore a dogma. The dogma was twofold. The unity and oneness of God and the immateriality of God. The former telling us what God is. The latter telling what God is not. The one overthrowing false gods with the sword, the other starting an idea with words. Philosopher, orator, apostle, legislator, warrior, conqueror of ideas, restorer of rational dogmas, of a cult without images the founder of 20 terrestrial empires and of one spiritual empire that is Muhammad. Peace and blessings of God be upon him. And as regards all the standards by which human greatness may be measured, we may well ask, as Lamartine is asking, is there any man greater than he, Lamartine, Histoire de la Torique, Paris, 1854, Volume 2, pages 276 to 277. The world has had its share of great personalities, but these were one sided figures who distinguished themselves in but not one or two fields, such as religious throughout our military leadership. The lives and teachings of these great personalities of the world are shrouded in the midst, in the midst of time. There is so much speculation about the time and place of their birth, the mode and style of their life, the measure of their success or failure, that it is impossible for humanity to risk reconstruct accurately the lives and teachings of these men. <coughs> Not so this man Muhammad. May some blessings be upon him. Accomplished so much in such diverse fields of human thought and behavior in the fullest blaze of human history. Every detail of his private life and public utterances 
has been accurately documented and faithfully preserved to our day. That is why we have the Sunnah or the Hadith of the teachings and words of Muhammad. He was always, my brothers and sisters, followed and recorded. Nothing was ever done in secret except when he goes to bed. The authenticity of the records so preserved are vouched for not only by the faithful followers of Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him, but even by his prejudiced critics. Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah. Former, a moral guide, an administrative colossus, a faithful friend, a wonderful companion, a devoted husband, a loving father of all in one. No other man in history have excelled or equaled him in any of these different aspects of life. But it was, it was only for the selfless, personal, and his personality of Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him, that caused him to achieve such Incredible perfection. Mahatma Gandhi, blessings of God be upon the great Mahatma, speaking of the character. Muhammad, peace and blessings in young India, saying, I want you to know the best of one who holds today undisputed sway over the hearts of millions of mankind. I became more convinced that it was not the sword that won the place for him in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the prophet, the scrupulous regard for his pleasures, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his intrepidity, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in, in his own mission. These are not the sword carried everything before them and surmounted every obstacle. When I closed the second volume of the prophet's biography, I was sorry. There was not more for me to read of this great life. My tongue got a bit dry, that is why I slipped up with intrepidity. Now let us hear what the famous Thomas Carlyle, Thomas Carlyle in his Heroes and Hero Worship, wrote, simply amazed as to how one man single-handedly could weld warring tribes and wandering Bedouins into a most powerful and civilized nation in less than two decades. Diwan Chandra Sharma wrote, Muhammad was the soul of kindness and his influence was felt and never forgotten by those around him. D.C. Sharma, the prophets of the East, Calcutta, 1935, page 12. Edward Gibbon and Simon Oakley on the profession of Islam wrote, I believe in one God and Muhammad, an apostle of God, is the simple and invariable profession of the religion of Islam. The simple the intellectual image of the deity has never been degraded by any visible idol. The honor of the prophet has never transgressed the measure of human virtues. And his living precepts have restrained the gratitude of his disciples within the bounds of reason and religion. History of the Saracen Empires, London, 1870, page 54. Muhammad, peace and blessings, was nothing more or less than a human being. But he was a man with a noble mission, which was to unite humanity in the worship of one and only one God and teach them the way to honest and upright living 
based on the commands of God. He always described himself as a servant, a messenger of God. And so indeed every action of his is proclaimed to be. Speaking on the aspect of equality before God in Islam, the famous poetess of India, Sarojini Naidu says, it was for the first religion that preached and practiced democracy. For in the mosque, when we call for prayer, is sounded, and worshippers are gathered together. Democracy of Islam is embodied five times a day, when the peasant and the king kneel side by side and proclaim, God is great. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. I've been struck over and over again by this indivisible unity of Islam that makes man instinctively a brother. As I do, ideals of Islam, with, with speeches and writings, Madras 1980, page 169, in the words of Professor Hurgonje, the League of National, the League of Nations founded by the Prophet of Islam put the principle of international unity and human brotherhood on such universal foundation as to show candle to other nations. He continues, the fact is that no, men, no nation of the world can show a parallel to what Islam has done towards the realization of the ideal of the League of Nations. The world has not hesitated to raise to divinity individuals whose lives and missions have been lost in legend. Historically speaking, none of these legends achieved even a fraction at what Muhammad accomplished. And all his strivings was for the sole purpose of uniting mankind for the worship of one God on the cause of moral excellence. Muhammad, blessings of Allah be upon him, was the son of God, or the God incarnate, or a man with divinity, but he always was, and even today considered, as just the messenger of God Almighty. Michael H. Hart, in his recently published book on men and women who contributed towards the benefit and upliftment of mankind rights, by choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and many may, may question. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful in both the religious and the secular. M. H. Hart, the 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history. K. S. Ramakrishna Rao, an Indian professor of philosophy, in his booklet, Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, calls him the perfect model for human life. Professor Ramakrishna explains his point by saying, the personality of Muhammad, it is most difficult to get into the whole truth of it. Only a glimpse of it I can catch. What a dramatic succession of picturesque scenes. There is Muhammad, the Prophet, there is Muhammad the warrior, Muhammad the businessman, Muhammad the statesman, Muhammad the orator, Muhammad the, the reformer, Muhammad the refuge of orphans, Muhammad the protector of slaves, Muhammad the emancipator of women, Muhammad the judge, Muhammad the saint, all in these magnificent roles, all in one, these departments of human activities, he is like a hero. Now, brothers and sisters, to give you some quotes of what some great men in history, and there's so many more, have said about Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Time is upon me. So let us remember this is not a celebration, but an observant in quiet and peace, using the occasion for dawah, to educate and to teach about Islam and about prophethood, and to bring non-Muslims in, in our fold, in the mosque, to sit and listen to our sermons and our programs, so they may understand the great man 
or the greatest man that walked the face of the world, earth, as Michael Hart sang there. La ilaha illallah. Oh, me musta ke ziyarat ye tamanna hai shah. Thank you for tuning in to the Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam.